Looking for a reliable VPN? Securely access apps, websites, entertainment, and more with NordVPN. With over 5,100 servers worldwide, all your data stays safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. Work, browse, or use social media platforms safely. All at a price you can afford. Get NordVPN today. Today's episode is called, Wings. In this ambitious episode, Richard Arlen and Buddy Rogers arrive in Hooterville to help save the Pixley Bijou movie theater. The community pulls out all the stops, including a parade and musical performances, for the long-delayed local premiere of the Academy Award-winning, Wings. Original air date, November 9, 1968. Ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It's a real friendly place, come and be our guest at the junction. There's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. comes by that naturally. Right, she got a lot of me in her. Well, she still has to have her beauty nap. So if you'll excuse us. Oh, oh hi, Mr. Drucker. Hi, hi, Mr. Drucker. Howdy, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi. Folks, I got some bad news. The Pixley Bijou Theater is closing its doors forever. You're kidding. What? Oh, awful. No, no, it's true. I just got the story for the World Guardian from Gus Huffle. He's throwing in the sponge. Yeah, say it all right. But I knew it was coming all along. You just can't get them good pictures anymore. Well, why not? They ain't making them. How long has it been since you've seen a Tess of the Storm Country? Her cardboard lover. <laughs> Nanook of the North. Oh, come on, Uncle Joe. Those are ancient. Yeah, but at least you knew who you was rooting for. Not like that picture we saw over at Riverdale the other day, Sam. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one where the fella robbed the bank. He shot the guard. Kidnapped the girl, hijacked the plane, left his partner to die. And he was the good guy. How come this happened all of a sudden? Well, it didn't. Gus says it's been coming on for a long time. See, it all started way back when he was supposed to have one of them big premieres, and the guest stars never showed up. Why not? Oh, some mix-up. Another theater scheduled a premiere for the same night. So the stars had to choose between the Pixley Bijou and the Roxy in New York City. And I'll be doggone if the Roxy in New York didn't win out. Some people thought they drew crooked straws. <laughs> what was his big premiere? For Buddy Rogers, Richard Arlen, and Wings. Wings? That's got to be 30 years old. 40. And he's blaming the closing of the Bijou Theater on something that happened 40 years ago? Well, no, Steve. You see, this was supposed to be one of those grand openings. And when it didn't come off... Gus felt he'd broken faith with the public. Yeah, it's a crying shame. With the beach you've gone, think what goes out of our lives. Take your youngin', for instance. What about her? She'll never have the pleasure of seeing a Ken Maynard festival. <laughs> watching popcorn in the Saturday matinee while watching the Green Archer. I remember. <laughs> Used to take us when we were kids. Yeah. Boy, were they scary. Remember, Billy Joe? I'll say. We had to leave the lights on all night. Yeah. <laughs> That was in your room, Uncle Joe. Oh, now, look. Wait a minute, we're getting off the track. What can we do to save the bijou? What can we do? He's broke, he's got to close. No, Steve, you just don't understand. The bijou is as much a part of the valley as a cannonball. And, and more than that, Gus Huffle's our friend. Now, we ought to try to do something to help him. Ah, you're darn tootin' we should. You know, there's whole generations that's never even heard of Rex the Wonder Horse. Say nothing to Ren 1010. Hi, Gus. Ah, good morning, Mr. 
Hi, Sammy Joe. We heard the news, Gus. We feel awful bad about it. Sad day, all right. Now, Gus, I, I just want to tell you, if there's anything I can do to help you, just call on me. Sam, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it, believe me, but it's too late. Oh, hey. How are you fellas would like some nice plates? Left over from dish night, huh? Well, I tried everything to keep the bijou open. Dish nights, kino, bingo. Nothing helped. Why lay all the blame on that Buddy Rogers and Dick Arlen? Imagine them not keeping their promise. Oh, Joe, I don't think you understand. This was a sneak preview. And them two sneaks didn't show up for the preview. <laughs> That's when all the trouble began. Oh, I'm sure they meant well. They seem like nice fellas. Don't you think so, Sam? Huh? Oh, sure. I saw every one of their pictures, and they always played the good guys. <laughs> you got to prove it to me. When you make a deal, you should stick to it. I'm a good mind to write them a letter about this. Oh, Joe, after 40 years? Oh, <laughs> I think it's a waste of time. Thank you, and excuse me. Well, at least I'd get it off my chest. Let them know what we think about them. Oh, for... I'm going to draft it to him right now while I'm good and sore. Well, Joe, I'd be awful careful about what I put in writing. Don't worry about me. I know how to be a diplomat. <laughs> i give you a hand, Gus. Sam. How many Z's in buzzard? <laughs> You boys are in real trouble. This Carson fellow writes a mean letter. First time I've ever been called that kind of a fink. P-H-I-N-K. <laughs> well, that's why I asked you to come in. I thought you'd get a charge out of it. The first time I've been called a buzzard with three Z's. <laughs> hey, look how he ends it. With warmest personal regards, affectionately yours, Joseph P. Carson. <laughs> Tell me. Did you boys really consider making a personal appearance at this Pixley Bijou? Mm, I, I faintly recall something about it. Yeah, there was some reason why we didn't get there. Pixley? Never heard of the place. That was the reason. Nobody else did either. <laughs> it says here in the letter the poor guy's losing his theater. Okay, so we show up a little late. You're kidding. But this guy's in real trouble. Yeah, and a premier's a premier. <laughs> Forget about that, Sam. Come take your beating. Oh, Joe, this thing with Gus and the Bijou's got me down. I don't feel like playing. Took a store. Hi, Sarah. Telegram for Joe Carson. Telegram? Tell him I'll try and make a payment by next month. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah? Yeah? Well, arrive Saturday for a belated premiere of Wings. Sign Richard Arlen and Buddy Rogers. Uh, 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 Sarah? Sarah! Get hold of yourself, Sarah. Uh, oh, no. Just as she said Richard Arlen and Buddy Rogers, she let out this swooning sound and must have keeled over backwards and took all the plugs with her. Are those guys going to show up? What it says in the wire. Boy, what a great story for the World Guardian. Well, it might be just a thing to save the bijou. You guys laughed when I wrote that letter. <laughs> Joe, this could be the greatest day in the history of... Good morning, Selma. Sam, Joe. Hi, Selma. Uh, what could be the greatest day in the history of something or other? Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell her. What's <laughs> not? What do you think I am, a blabbermouth? <laughs> Selma, Richard Arlen and Buddy Rogers are coming to town Saturday for the premiere of Wings. <laughs> Richard Arlen and Buddy Rogers? Oh. And Lisa! And the Blazers! And George! And Buddy Rogers and Richard Arlen! Down! Scooped again. You know, she got twice the circulation of the Guardian. <laughs> for this coming Saturday, the most momentous occasion in the history of the Valley. First of all, when Mr. Rogers and Mr. Arlen arrive in town, I'll give them an official welcome. Then we'll proceed to... Hold it, just hold it, Joe. It's customary when important guests arrive in town that the mayor extend them an official welcome. Oh, why not in this case? Why, I'm certain that Mr. Arlen and Mr. Rogers will be expecting the leading socialite of the Valley to greet them. <laughs> and that's just what I'll do. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, Selma. As entertainment chairman of the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club, 
I should have that honor. Tell me one reason why. My record. I was in charge of our last little theater production of Peter Pan, which was a huge success. You should know, Selma. You play Peter Pan. <laughs> Some success. On opening night, the wire broke, and I spread eagled into the orchestra pit. Selma, many people thought that was the highlight of our theatrical season. <laughs> I don't care. I am going to greet Buddy and Dickie and be their escort through the whole affair. Now, just hold your horses, Selma. As leading merchant and postmaster and editor, it's my inalienable civic responsibility to perform that duty. <laughs> Sam, that is ridiculous. Well, it's no more ridiculous than some of these other things I've been hearing. Oh, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. So this whole thing won't blow up because of dissension. This is how it'll be handled. I'll be the official greeter, and I'll run the whole shebang. Meeting adjourned. Pretty stupid thing to do. Why am I leaving? This is my store. <laughs> you hear all that? Yeah. Steve, where did I go wrong? Well, I think it was right after you said, attention, fellow citizens. <laughs> get to Pixley from here. No, you can't miss it. Just keep on this road for a piece, and it's just two miles the other side of Greater Crabwell Corner. <laughs> Say, ain't you, uh, Hollywood? Movies? <laughs> and you're... Oh, I have seen you. Oh, yes, I have. Hundreds of times. Hey, Martha! Martha, come quick! See Monty Blue and Clive Brooks. <laughs> Could have been worse. We could have been Charlie Chase and Chester Conklin. <laughs> sure want to thank you girls for coming down here with me. We can understand why you wouldn't want to greet them alone. Especially after what you put in the letter. Well, I wanted to make it sound like the trip would be worthwhile. Oh, you did. And I quote, when it comes to premieres, the Bijou will outdo the Roxy any day in the week. You would have, too, if the stupid people around here hadn't been so stubborn. It just might be them now. Well, it's the Bijou, all right. It sure goes all out for a premiere, huh? <laughs> Look at that swarming mob of fans over there. Three. <laughs> well, he did say it was a small town. Um... Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Arlen? Yes. Well, hello. I'm Billy Joe Bradley. Hi. This is my sister, Bobby Joe, and uh, my uncle, Mr. Carson. Carson? Hey, you're the fellow that wrote the letter, aren't you? Yeah. I'm the one. Um, on behalf of my uncle Joe, I must say that he really did make some good plans for the premiere, but, well, we ran into some bickering among our local townspeople. Yeah, that's what you're up against in these small towns. You've always got some know-it-all that wants to run the whole works. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> we feel badly about having you come all this way, especially for what we thought was something so worthwhile. Yeah, if the premier had come off, it might have kept the bijou from closing. Well, maybe there's something we can still do. Boy, I'm glad to hear you say that, because there certainly is. And I know just where to start. Mr. Buddy Rogers, Mr. Dick Arlen, I'd like for you to meet Mayor Potts. <laughs> well, how do you do? Welcome, Mr. Rogers. Oh, welcome. Welcome, Mr. Arlen. Mayor Potts, this Bradley tells us you run a very progressive town. Yes, we saw the parking meter you had installed. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. I rammed that project through in spite of the city fathers. <laughs> Mayor Potts was also responsible for having a bird bath installed in the city square. <laughs> no, really? Hey, you can't miss it. Dedication plaque with the mayor's name on it's bigger than the bird bath. <laughs> mayor Potts, Mr. Arlen and Mr. Rogers were wondering if we could get your cooperation for the premiere of Wings. Of yes. course, of course you can. What, the vast facilities of my office are at your beck and call. 
Let me show you the red curving I had painted in front of the depot. Oh, no, what a fight that was. Bet. But encouraged by the voice of the people. <laughs> oh, and another thing. Mr. Drucker is not only the leading merchant in town, but he's also the postmaster and the editor of the Hooterville World Guardian. Merchant, postmaster, and editor? That's correct. <laughs> Out on the coast, we brag about Howard Hughes. Hello, Mrs. Plout. Oh, hello, Billy Joe. I'm waiting for the train to Pixley. Mrs. Plout, I'd very much like for you to meet Mr. Buddy Rogers and Mr. Richard Arlen. How do you do? Buddy <gasps> Rogers and Richard Arlen! <laughs> Mrs. Plout is the leading performer in our little theater group. Oh, I could spot that right away, couldn't you, Dick? Oh, immediately. I could see that Julie Andrews flair. Oh, Julie Andrews, you're joking. Uh, Kim Novak, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Plout, uh, Mr. Rogers and Mr. Arlen were wondering if you would cooperate in putting on the premiere of Wings so that we could help Gus Huffle and the Bijou. Would I cooperate? Oh, Buddy and Dicky, and uh, Dick, I'm at your command. Uh, I would even sweep the streets for you. Good, I'll get the broom and dustpan. You... Oh, you dog, baby, you... Uh, now, what is it you wanted me to do? Well, uh... Starring Ruddy Rogers and Dick Arlen? <laughs> Gus said they ran short of bees. <laughs> citizens. As Mayor Potts, I extend to you an official greeting on this history-making day in the life of our town. You know, as I sat in my office this morning, looking out the window at our new parking meter, and the bird bath in our city square, and the red curbing in front of the depot, I thought to myself, what a proud day this is for our thriving community. <laughs> and, and, and with this thought in mind, let the festivities begin.
Bobby Joe Bradley, Hooterville's It Girl. to Mr. Joe Carson, the leader of our volunteer fire department band. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, Mr. Arlen, it's customary when celebrities visit our town that we give them the honor of performing with our volunteer fire department band. Since you play the trombone, we're going to ask you to be our guest soloist. <laughs> You, Mr. Arlen, will be our guest conductor. Uh, just step this way. Mr. Arlen, you take the podium. Uh, oh, uh, you know hot time in the old town tonight? Why, I think so. Hey, fellas, he knows it. All right, you start at the beginning and the band will join in. Take it away, Mr. Arlen. showing of this great picture, Wings, we wish to enshrine forever this momentous moment in the history of Pixley. Gentlemen, for posterity's sake, we would like your footprints to commemorate this great event. We should have worn our sneakers. You squawking when I just bought this. <laughs> oh, hold it. Not yet. Professor, if you please. everything what you did. Oh, we had very little to do with it. It was mostly Uncle Joe and the cooperation of all the people. Yeah. With your kind of support, I'm sure I could keep the old Bijou open now. That's exactly what we've been hoping for, Mr. Huffle. Thank you very much. Come, be go. <laughs> <laughs> They 
good looking. Wouldn't you love to meet them? Dear, you're about 40 years too late. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 